see you again. It's nice to see you. It's amazing to be in this beautiful office, which I read about, I read many articles about. Could you give us a quick tour? So our idea was to create a space which was a little bit like a home, you know, with living room areas, areas where everybody can gather, eat, talk. This is our wellness room that has um, a nap pod. Ooh, a nap pod. And we also have ma massages. Wow, I want to come and work here. <laughs> Oh, whoa, I want to put one of these in my house. And these are all my daughter's paintings. Wow, this is a big office. How many people are working at Thrive Global now? A hundred people. And then we have an office in San Francisco where our product and engineering team are, are based. And um, an office in Mumbai we launched in India. And an office in Athens. And now we just need an office in China. Yes, definitely. I remember hearing your story of how Jack Ma, you know, inspired you or encouraged you to start this business. Well, in 2014, when I wrote my book Thrive, um, I was invited to speak at uh, Jack Ma's first women's conference in Hongzhou. And I spoke about the themes of Thrive, you know, how can we reduce stress and burnout in our lives. And that night at the speaker's dinner, um, he said to me, if I were you, I would leave the Huffington Post and launch a company on the themes that you described. Because, you know, he was very aware of how stress and burnout were growing everywhere, including in China and the impact this had on mental health, depression, anxiety. Oh, how charming. So this is my office. Wow, here we have Oprah Winfrey. She's a real inspiration as well. What was your first impression of Jack Ma you know, when you first saw him? I think um, Jack Ma, beyond being an amazing visionary, he spoke in Davos about the need to move beyond IQ and EQ, emotional intelligence, to what he called LQ, the love quotient. And that's consistent with his belief that the last century was about muscle and the new century will be about wisdom. And I think that's a very profound message as we are looking at the impact that artificial intelligence and machine learning are having and um, how we can counteract the fact that obviously millions of jobs are going to be destroyed. And as Jack Ma has said, the machines will become more intelligent than we are, but they are not going to become more caring and more loving and more creative. And so that's kind of our competitive advantage as humans. Mm -hmm. And we need to cultivate these qualities. We need to cultivate them in the way we educate our children, in the qualities we practice. Mm, I love that. <laughs> Even in Davos last year, when they asked him about sleep, and he said that when, you know, when I'm dealing with a lot of problems, the best thing I can do is get a good night's sleep so I can have all my cognitive performance and all my resources to be able to deal with them. And so you two are speaking the same love language. More and more people are now recognizing um, the fact that, um, you know, the delusion that in order to succeed, we need to be always on is not working. And it's particularly important as we see the power of technology to addict us. You know, the power we see that in games, we see that in China, of course, with more and more young people being so addicted to games uh, that many of them have to be sent to rehab centers. So at, at Thrive, we work with helping people, whether young or old, to set boundaries to their relationship with their phones, with games, with social media, so that they can enjoy all the incredible advantages that technology brings us without losing their own humanity. So, Ariana Huffington 
和睡觉、睡眠。And do you remember the first time you met you met Jack? What was the impression? You know, what was his aura? I love the way he connected with everyone. You know, a very deep、um, capacity for intimacy. With a lot of the women, it was an audience of mostly women、um, in the in the auditorium, and of course, it's just wonderful to see that manifestation of humanity、uh, by somebody who has created a company、um, that has really. Been entirely built on the most advanced technology, which is what we talk a lot about here. We call it augmented humanity.、Mm -hmm. So we are not just focusing on augmented reality, but how can we also nurture our most human qualities? And so it seems that Jack Ma really charmed a whole auditorium of women. <laughs> <laughs> We're very interested about the sleep revolution. I mean, how did it come about? I know I understand you have a personal story.、Um, you were obviously working very, very hard,、uh, but then something there was a trigger for you. Yes,、uh, in 2007, you know, two years into building the Huffington Post, I collapsed from exhaustion and burnout and sleep deprivation. Hit my head on my desk, broke my cheekbone, and that was the beginning. This book is Ariana Grande's Sleep Revolution, Sleep Revolution. She said, "A good night's sleep, a good sleep, can change your entire life." I completely agree with her. You know, unless you have a genetic mutation, about one to one and a half percent have a genetic mutation, and they don't need a lot of sleep.、Uh, the vast majority of us need seven to nine hours. I'm an eight-hour girl. Same. <laughs> And when we get the sleep we need, we're so much more effective, so much more productive. We are not as、uh, reactive and as easily upset by things that happen. So I wonder if it's just a matter of years until we can do that genetic mutation to make sure that we are all like that one percent.、Um, <laughs> I don't think so because I think sleep has a real evolutionary purpose. It's the only time. That the brain can clean up all the toxins that accumulate through the day, and、um, we now see a connection between sleep deprivation and Alzheimer's, and more and more people are now recognizing the importance of sleep, and so the conversation has now moved from does sleep matter to how do I get a good night's sleep, and that's where. The product that we are building at Thrive Global is a behavior change platform that helps people integrate small micro steps in, into their daily lives that will help them adopt better habits. And actually, this is something that I myself, as soon as I, when, you know, as I age and I get more wise, I realize, you know, time to just say no to things, cut things out, to get that good night's sleep. I know you had a fun exchange with Elon Musk on Twitter. Recently, where yes, well, I, I sent actually, I, I, I wrote an,、e, uh, an open letter to Elon Musk, whom I admire a lot as an incredible visionary, to make it clear that he was fully aware of all the science and the data around human energy. You know, the way he understands so well. You know the most advanced energy to drive cars. It's also very important to understand the most advanced science around human energy. And there's no question that if he stays up all night, he,、um, his cognitive performance is going to be impaired. And that's why we had these examples of him tweeting things that turned out not to be true about taking his. Company private, and now more recently about how many cars Tesla is going to produce, and and leading to SEC investigations, which are at the minimum a huge distraction、um, if you are building a pioneering company. But now the interesting thing is, he responded to you and he said, "I don't have enough time to sleep." Well, he more or less said that what I suggested is not possible, but that's the delusion. Mm. That so many people are living under, and that's the delusion that's changing. So you have a lot of leaders 
like Jeff Bezos, writing on Thrive Global um, that he sleeps for eight hours because it improves his decision making. So we are at this inflection point, and like any turning point, you have pioneers who understand all the latest science and are including it in their lives, and others who are lagging behind. And it will take them longer to get caught up with the latest science around sleep and recovery. It's not just sleep. Look at athletes. Mm -hmm. You know, athletes are a great example of, wha of what they do to have the competitive edge that they need to win. What do we do if our partner snores? Because this is a real thing, and this is what's stopping me from moving in with my boyfriend right now. He's snoring. <laughs> You know Bose headphones? Yeah. They have produced sleep buds, which are completely noise cancelling. They are tiny, you put them in your ear, and they completely cancel all noise, including your partner snoring. Uh, hey. I'll see if we, have a, if we have one here and I'll give it to you. Thank you. My pillow. More important than pillows and mattresses. Uh, are the micro steps we recommend. Number one micro step is charging your phone outside the bedroom because the phone is the repository of every problem, every project, everything you're dealing with in your life and you need to disconnect from that in order to be able to sleep. Um, I hear you tuck it into bed. Yes, in fact, it's over there. You can take Ooh, a picture oh, of it. Yeah, we'll it's a, it it's a like charging that. station. You can charge as many as 10 phones and iPads. And human beings learn through rituals. And it's a little ritual to tuck it un under the little blanket and say good night and you reconnect in the morning and you're both fully recharged. <laughs> mm. <laughs> you write down maybe three things you are grateful for because that helps you end the day on a positive note. I love to have a bath or a shower to wash away the day um, mm. so that we can also disconnect from our day and be able to fully recharge. So Well, Ariana, I brought you something from China. Uh, we call it a taste of China. Have you ever had this and what do you think it is? I have never had this. Mm, it, it looks like spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Aliana this is Italian Interesting, what kind of spaghetti are you eating? <laughs> well, you know, there's like um, healthy spaghetti that is not all the same size. <laughs> so what is it? So it's probably I'm, sweet. I'm going to let you sniff it. Tell me what it is. Are you a vegetarian? Um, no. Okay, then you can you can have have a taste and guess what it is. I'm not going to have a taste. You tell me what it is. <laughs> it is a chicken's foot. Oh my god! Amazing. <laughs> and you can eat it like that as a snack. It's pickled. It, this is one of our favorite, our most beloved feng shui. All Chinese people love eating it. So I'm going to keep it for lunch. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. This is a vegetable. Yes. And this is called la tiao. Fantastic. I'm going to, this is going to be my lunch. <laughs> a chicken's leg. And chicken's lunch. foot. Chicken's foot, I'm sorry. And la tiao. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, Ariana, for your time today. Thank you so much. Really great to be with you. Thank you. <laughs> Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be posting a new video each week who have tips and tricks that I think will help all of us lead a better life.